Hey guys, let's take a look at the software on this Samsung Intercept now. So let's start off by turning on the screen. That is the button you use to turn on the screen. Once it's turned on, you'll see that there's a lock icon and once if you touch that, it wants you to drag to unlock. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, you'll notice that uh, it looks like Android default, but uh, with a hint of Samsung's TouchWiz interface, although Samsung might not be calling it TouchWiz. Most of the stuff here is default Android 2.1. So it has the same pull-up app drawer, has the same window shade with a slight color colored from Samsung that's carried over from TouchWiz. So uh, if you notice here in the window shade, you have an M icon that's for uh, that's for an unread Gmail email, and another uh, Sprint Zone uh, icon in here. So let's pull the window shade down and show you what those are. So there's a little notification in the window shade over there. And here are four custom buttons that Samsung has added that are not there in default Androids. You can turn Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or your sound profile easily from here. This phone comes with three home screens, just like on the moment. It feels pretty smooth when you use the transitions. Feel pretty smooth. Not a whole lot of default icons. A Sprint TV widget over here and a NASCAR widget down there on the main screen you have the phone, contacts, email, calendar, market, voicemail all the good stuff that a first time user would need and on this home screen you have the ESP and CNN and the YouTube app alright let's take a look at the app drawers and the apps that come by default on this phone so you have the Amazon MP3 gallery, Facebook, Maps, Memo Oh, uh, another neat app that comes by default on this phone is the My Files app. It's like uh, if you have used Astro File Browser in the market, this is kind of a similar thing. You can view your memory card Android, go to Home, or go to Up. And let's take a look at more of the apps. So sprint, some sprint apps over here, like the Sprint Football, Sprint TV, Sprint Zone, and it also comes with Think, Think Free Office. That's uh, for viewing Microsoft Office documents and the Voice Dialer, Voice Search, Voicemail, and they've also added Wear application. That's a location-based uh, services application, just like if you use Yelp. It's kind of similar to that. Let's take a look at these sprint zone icon that's in here see what what it offers so you can view your account if you need help sprint news and some suggested apps although this phone doesn't come with sprint navigation but you could download it from here and it's free I believe it uses telenav GPS so if you don't like Google Maps GPS that's included for free on here you could use the sprint navigation app too your choice and let's go market notice that the market has a sprint tab on here now it's it'll show you sprint uh, rec recommended applications just like Verizon AT&T and T-Mobile have that let's take a look at the contacts on the Samsung Intercept so I've uh, synced up for t our test Gmail account with all the contacts on there so you see some aliens from movies and some other characters from the alien movies. You can quickly scroll down like that or you could use the number row, the alphabetical row on the side to scroll down quickly. And just stop at the big alphabet you see on the middle of the screen and you can click on a contact to view more details emails you can call or send message of course all the numbers on the contacts are imaginary you can look at the contacts history if you have any calls or text messages from them media 
hit the back button to go back. We have groups. All my contacts are from Gmail at the moment. No history activities. If you have uh, some Facebook contacts or Twitter contacts, you, you get an update of list of activities from there. Uh, here's the default uh, dialer. Samsung has touched up the default dialer compared to the Android version. In my opinion, it looks better. You can dial a number and click on this little messaging icon to compose a message to this contact. And here you have call log, favorites, con and straight away go to contacts. Notice that uh, Samsung has a blue, bluish highlighting uh, theme going on here, which is also different than default Android. There's a calendar. I don't have anything created, but if you s if you have anything created over here, uh, th there'll be a little icon in the cor one of the corners, and then it'll show you the. If you click on a day, you could create a calendar event. You could view the calendar by monthly basis or weekly basis, or you could view the calendar on your daily view, which which shows you all your list of appointments in that day or you could have a list it's your choice uh, let me show you the default uh, gmail client that's included with the every android operating system so here's the default android uh, email that was unread if you go back to the main menu you could just hit the back button it'll take you back to the main menu and here's a list of all my emails in this account and it shows the pictures and handles it pretty well. One of the downsides is that there's no tap to zoom or pinch to zoom in this Gmail client, which can be a pain sometimes. Like over here, the picture is too big to fit in the phone screen, so I have to scroll around a bit. Also, you'll notice that although this phone is set to replace to the moment, but they have downgraded some things. Uh, for example, it uh, uses the EVDO zero instead of the EVDO rev a uh, wireless network so it should get slightly slower speeds and also you'll notice that the screen resolution has been downgraded graded from 320 by 480 to 240 by 400 so uh, one downside to that is on this 3 inch touch screen with that resolution you uh, I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not but the text is not uh, as sharp as a uh, as some of the other phones. Let's take a look at the Sprint TV app. So it started up, you could view live channels on here. For example, if you wanted to view ESPN, that's viewable. Okay, we don't want to view that. Let's go ahead and watch ESPN Mobile TV. Let's turn on the volume. take a look at the gallery all right here's the gallery uh, the thing about the gallery is that although the phone has pinch to zoom multi-touch zoom the gallery does not have pinch to zoom it only has double tap to zoom and you can uh, use the plus and minus to set the zoom the browser and the phone does have pinch to zoom and the gallery also doesn't have slide sideways to select a different photograph you have to hit these little arrows on the side to switch to different photographs you can add, add more widgets to the home screen by long pressing on that but you'll notice that you can only add shortcuts to these to these things over here or you could add widgets folders or change wallpapers notice that the applications are missing from here I'm not sure why Samsung did that, but uh, it's going to be a pain to add applications to the home screen. 
first you'll have to bring up the app drawer and for example if you wanted to add the browser to the home screen long press that and then drag it to the home screen so that's how you go have to add applications to this phone or you could drag it to a different home screen if you like like I found on the main home screen so let's go ahead and take a look at the browser so I've loaded up uh, our Elite Bevel Tech main home page in the browser uh, you can see the and pinch to zoom works quite well here not the most smoothest but it gets the job done or you could zoom in and out with the plus and the minus thanks to the 800 megahertz processor the uh, browser is pretty speedy because of the low resolution you have to zoom in quite a bit to see the text accurately another, another feature I would like to show you is that if you zoom in with the plus and the minus if the text is too big for the screen the text will resize to the horizontal dimensions of the screen so you don't have to scroll sideways but if you zoom in or out with a pinch to zoom the if the text is bigger than the screen sideways it does not resize so you have to scroll sideways I don't know if that's a feature into the Google Android or if uh, Samsung did it but somebody needs to take a look into it and it should be uniform regardless of the way you zoom in or out the text should resize so let's take a look at the uh, messaging application so if if you have a missed text on the lock screen it'll show you missed text and the number so here's the messaging application again it's not on the home screen you have to dig through the app drawer to find it so you get a full threaded conversation and if you type in the portrait mode it brings up the normal Android keyboard which uh, I believe can use some work to make it better but fortunately this phone has a physical keyboard that you can pull out and use it's a pretty good keyboard even has some nice little shortcuts like the Wi-Fi shortcut over here and a little menu hot button over here since uh, these buttons have had some problems with them they don't, don't respond always sometimes they freeze up or sometimes they take a little bit uh, more pressure to re register your key press so I feel it's good, good button to have a menu button on the hard hardware keyboard and you also get Google Voice search that's included with every uh, Google Android phone you can also use the same uh, mic icon to navigate to some somewhere so let's try navigating to navigate to Starbucks and it's going to bring up the Google Maps navigation and just let's pick any one of these so the nearest one is 1.3 miles away If you want to exit the navigation, just hit the menu button and hit navigate exit navigation. So it brings you back to the home screen. Also, you get voice dialer with uh, Google Android. Call J. So you could call J on mobile. Of course, it's not gonna dial anywhere. It's a fiction fiction new number. So that's a quick look at the software and in the f next video we'll take a look at the benchmarks on this thing and I'll compare it with the Droid Error.